Hi everyone, Winamid here, and I've been practicing pixel art recently. I'd like to document my learning and share some of the things I've learned along the way with you. So here's a week's worth of pixel art practice and 20 tips I've learned. I've been following the at pixel dailies themes, which I highly recommend, and I'll leave a link to that in the description of this video. Also, if you want a text version of this, check out the pinned comment for a link to my website. So the first theme was Minotaur. There are a couple of pixel character workflows, but I think one of the best is to start off with a black and white silhouette just to define the overall form and then build layers of shading on top of it only when you're sure that you're done with the overall shape. Now, I had a hard time drawing armor because overlapping pieces of metal on top of skin tend to generate some pretty complex shadows, which leads me to a second point. Make sure to keep in mind the direction of your light and follow it consistently. Mark your light source on a different layer if you can, and consider how shadows would look projected from that light source. On a related point, when you're using symmetry, make sure to use it wisely. Be careful when you're using it for shadows or reflections as those tend to be asymmetric if your light source is off to one side. Now, towards the end of the video, you'll see that I added an axe and a background. Now, I think it's a good idea to create a subtle background uh, so as to not detract from the focal point of your image, but you'll notice that the axe sort of unbalances it, so you should be careful. When you add additional large elements, make sure to double check the symmetry of the image and make sure that you haven't unbalanced everything. So the second theme was repeating 32 by 32 patterns, and I think this is one of the most difficult pixel art pieces that I had to do. I probably spent an hour trying different ideas, but I ended up discarding a lot of them. And so I suggest that you check out art reference from categories that you find interesting. And places like the r slash pixel art subreddit or maybe even ArtStation might be helpful for inspiration. Additionally, brainstorming and iteration help. Just sit down with a pen and paper and write down as many ideas in five minutes as you can if you're stuck, regardless of how strange you think these ideas are, and then go through the list, combining them, eliminating them, or seeing if there's any common themes. Now for some specific tips regarding leaves and tile sets. You might want to start off with a single primitive shape, um, the leaf shape in this example, and repeat it with a limited color palette, uh, as limited as you can get away with. Then just repeat, but there are a couple things that you may want to keep track of. So first, uh, consistency in shadow direction. Darken things carefully and consistently in a certain direction. Make use of the tiling tool if your software has one. A sprite can, both, can tile in both axes, which is really quite useful. Watch for colors being adjacent. Try to avoid clumps of similar color too close to each other as it ends up being sort of a combined mass to the eye and um, kind of detracts from the level of detail. Next, you want to keep constant awareness about your signal to noise ratio with things that are intrinsically noisy, like leaves. One of the principal skills in pixel art is the ability to distill the signal from noise. In this case, overlapping leaf shapes and varying shadow. Um, so if you just put random pixel colors everywhere, you're going to really confuse the eye of the viewer. Make sure that you have areas of high and low contrast and that not everywhere is the same, otherwise um, the viewer will have no idea where to focus. Finally, you want to define a darkest shadow color and fill in the edges if you're having a hard time making it tileable. Overall, this is one of the most difficult pixel arts to make in this section, but I think it turned out pretty well. Okay, so the third theme was flannel. I had to look up what this meant, but I'll assume most of you are less oblivious than I am to clothing. So one thing that I experimented here with uh, was shaded outlining, and I found it very useful um, if you were to adequately respect the light source. So, so, my, so my next tip is to try lighting your outlines. You'll see that this image is also rather noisy because of all the different colors and patterns. Texturing tends to create a lot of noise, and a good way to avoid that is to remain conscious of a larger view, as well as to add high contrast shadows to highlight elements, like under the front pocket here. Finally, I think that the background really complemented the image, so I suggest using a background with something like three or four analogous colors, which are colors uh, next to other colors on the color wheel with a simple pattern to emphasize your drawing. I like lines, diagonal ones sort of add a little bit of flair, 
Um, so maybe go with something like that. All right, so the fourth theme was bathroom. Now, this piece probably took me the longest time, and I figured out that uh, creating an environment, uh, a good place to start was not with a silhouette, but with sort of a semi-transparent guide layer. You want to draw in all of the elements of the scene and then use them wisely. So I experimented with a lot of things here, but I think there was a good opportunity to select a strong theme. So before working on a more abstract task like bathroom, make sure to focus on a strong core idea and build your art around it. I was going for a minimalist plant look, and perhaps I should have realized I was overcomplicating the wall design, so you'll see me scaling it up considerably to fix that. Again, too much detail in pixel art can really throw off the eye and make it hard to select a focus. If you want to really highlight something, you can always increase its saturation and brightness to draw the eye to it. Also, color in your shadows. Going with a zero saturation black is not a good idea because it's kind of boring. Instead, you can tint your darkest colors. A good tint is indigo, which we tend to naturally associate with the color of night. So maybe go with that. Finally, if you want to add a volumetric lighting to your scene, a good way to do this is another semi-transparent overlay layer, which you can fill in, but make sure to cut out the shadows, like the plant on the windowsill. The last theme I'll be exploring in this video, Kraken. This time I went for an isometric game tile look because, um, I don't know, I thought it looked interesting. I think this is one of my strongest pieces also, because not only did I have a strong theme, but I also told a story. Most of the greatest artwork you'll find in pixel art and elsewhere tells a story of some sort, and it's that narrative that really sells the piece and draws people in. I wanted to capture the story of a monstrous kraken that really just wanted to hug, and, had, and was having a hard time making friends for some reason. To enforce the duality of destruction and cuteness, I tried to emphasize the scale of the Kraken relative to the boat, although I probably could have done a better job defining that boat, as well as giving the Kraken a pretty non-threatening face and even a thought bubble with a heart. For the white outline, I suggest you do it manually, for any outline in this case, and move it to its own layer. This will make it easier to animate and easier to adjust the color if you ever need to do that. I also think that this piece demonstrates something really interesting about pixel art I probably should have noticed. The limitations of low resolution can make it really hard to define complex curves, and I think I should have made this at a higher resolution. I suggest you set your default to a higher canvas size than you think you need, because down downsizing an over-complex image is always easier than upscaling an oversimplified one, simply because adding detail is much harder than removing it. Okay, so that's all for today, folks. If you got it this far, thank you for watching. I'm not really the best at pixel art, but I know I have a long way to go, and I hope that these tips were useful. Finally, a little schedule update. Since I have a bit more time now, I'll be producing four videos every month instead of two until the next school term starts. You can expect one every Friday now. I'll still be releasing Blender content every other week, but now, in the off weeks, I'll be releasing a game development video, which will be about pixel art like this one, a Unity tutorial, or a devlog, or perhaps some other related topic. As always, if you like this video and you want to see more, subscribe and turn on notifications for updates. If you have any suggestions for future videos or other questions, leave that in the comments and I'll be sure to check them out. See you!